330, 340 every year, you know, and he had some power. But oh, uh, yeah. just uh, he was fun. Uh, I mean, he it's was a just... shame that he was just a utility ball player. Oh, when he was down in fantasy camp, I mean, even at that age, you know, I mean, he was pretty good at shortstop. You know, his hands were quick right. as anything, and people didn't realize all that. And, oh, you know, great, and then we great became shortstop. real good friends. And, and then he started selling his title insurance in uh, New York and yeah. did quite well and lived up in Connecticut. And then uh, we used to go, he used to play in a lot of golf, you know, Yogi's uh, golf tournament all the time. And that's where he had his first stroke at Yogi's golf tournament. I don't remember that. I know. Yeah. Yeah. He, right? yeah. he failed. He but failed Yogi was, you know. He had the stroke. Yeah. He Bill's really did. Guy. We're going to miss him and uh, baseball will miss him, you know. And, but, and miss Yogi. I mean, Yogi was uh, – <laughs> Yogi was my guy, you know, because uh, I used to come in probably with a hangover every now and then. And uh, Yogi, I go to Yogi, Yogi, I, I ate too much candy. I don't feel well. You're playing. I played 161 ball games. He kept me in there every day. And that's the year I hit 100 RBIs. You know, I had 28 home runs with Yogi, 1964. So uh, Yogi was my guy. He, he believed in me. He took. He kept me in there against left handers. He just made me play every day. Yeah, I think he must have saw all my talent. We got <laughs> this all a bit. talent. So I think we should. I think we should announce. I think we should officially announce that we're live, boys. <laughs> and Lisa, how are you, Lisa? Good. How are you? Good, good. Lisa is the administrator of Yankees Daily, one of the largest Yankees fan group on I Facebook. She's Lisa Diana, I think. She she was kind enough to bring up Joe Pepitone for us. Hey Joe, how are you? All right, sweetheart. I love Let me you. Tell you. I got one story. I mean, love you. I mean, is feeling better, and she loves you, Lisa. Oh, good. Awesome, awesome, Ron. You have a story you want to start off with? Oh, I think. Oh, I think they muted Ron. Well, you know what? Then I'm going to go ahead because I want to talk to Joe Pepitone about. I want to take it back to the beginning. Okay, back where you started. There was no draft back in the day. You, you know, you're, and- you're something else. Let me tell you something here. No, that no. was 50 years ago. I'm 80 years old. I can't remember what happened I yesterday. I know, but I understand that. But I want to go back to your side. I'm already kidding. Spring training. You made it to. The, you're in the minor leagues for four years. You made it to the major leagues in the uh, spring of 1962, Fort Lauderdale. You walk into the Yankees clubhouse and you first see Yogi Berra, bringing right. back Yogi Berra. So what was well, that? Well, all the guys, when I first went in 1962, is the year I really made that club. I hit nine home runs in spring training. And it's, uh, it was a great feeling. But that's the first time I got to know Mickey and all those guys and everything like that, you know. A great bunch of guys. But, you know, I was – I. I I guess my charisma thing was because I grew up that way. I had, I, you know, my father died when he was 39 years old. Right. And once he was gone, but I, I was on my own, you know, and uh, my mother really took care of me, but she couldn't handle me like he could, you know, he'd just give me a look and I knew when to shut up. The, the but, you eye, know, the so, but just cut, you know, just, just, that was a big, big thing in my life when my father passed away. I but I just, when I went away, instead of being depressed, I was very depressed when my father died. As a matter of fact, my friends had my mother had to call my friends in to come and drag me out of the house and take me to Coney Island and have a hot dog, you know. But it's just, uh, but they did, and then and going back to you know with to the minor league experience, uh, my first year was great. I was away from home. That's when I first met Phil Lins. But then after that, I, uh, you know, uh, that one month I played down there, I had a little experience of uh, minor league baseball. Next year, I went to the Northern League and uh, where the heck was I? In Fargo, North Dakota. They really made sure I, I was out of the New York. <laughs> so they sent me to Fargo and uh, I had a real good year. I led the league in doubles and triples and, uh, and I had a few home runs. They could see my power coming. I was a spray hitter at that time. And uh, then from there, uh, had a good year. They sent me to Binghamton and I got a taste of a slider at that time and knew what the slider looked like. And it, I didn't have a great year, but they just gave me the double-A ball. Double-A ball, I hit 315 and hit some power and all that. And they, that's when I went up to New York. So that was, it was just a great feeling. When I got to New York, uh, 
they greeted me. They remembered me. You know, I won a few ball games for her in 62. Yes, you did. And when I got there in uh, 63, I won a first base job. Uh, they, Muscarin was traded to the Dodgers. Yep. And uh, I had a good year, my first year. You know, and uh, I had 272. I had 27 home runs, you know, and I uh, drove in 89 runs. So that was a good year for my rookie year. No, that's so a then that's, that was a great day. But then with Mantle and them and all, they couldn't understand me because I just love to have fun, you know, and these guys were really serious about the game, you know. Uh, I mean, they were good. To, Mickey was the greatest teammate in the world, you know. Right. And he took a hold of me right away. And uh, they, they, my locker was right next to his. They put the, the, the top rookie next to the superstar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Mantle did that. I used to come in with my hair dryer. They never seen a hair dryer in baseball, and I put in a hair dryer. <laughs> and uh, I, I remember I, uh, I was going to the Copeland Banner that night. I was just in a black suit, and chocolate, right after a ball game. I said, "Nick, to talk, get him off the air." I know, Nick, Nick. <laughs> I'm gonna talk over here. Get me shut up. Fine. What the fuck is this? Oh, wait a minute. I just oh, finished my it. story. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I, I can't oh, see you. There you go. Come on. No, he's got. You know what? You always got to interrupt. I know you make such an entrance because we should introduce Nick Turturro, everybody. Yeah, but that's your fault. Hi, Nick. <laughs> and we also have former Governor Patterson with us as well, another Yankee fan from Brooklyn. We got Brooklyn in the house. This is amazing. Yeah. See, Joe? <laughs> hey, before Nick, before I'm in, you I'm talk in trouble to now. Joe, we got a governor go. on here. <laughs> Wait, before, the first time I came up to New York in 1969, I came up the last 30 days. I'm 18 years old. I see uh, all the ball players, and there was a, a, a uniform and there was a locker. Uh, there was uh, a, a player was missing. Joe Pepitone was missing from the Yankees. I don't know if you remember this in 69. Uh, Ralph was your manager, and you uh, went out fishing for four days, and they didn't know where you were. You remember that? Do I remember that? I didn't remember when I was on. <laughs> Don't let me get into that, please. I remember coming up. Yes, I remember that. Johnny, who was it? Who was the manager at the time? Johnny, no, no, it was Ralph Hal. It was Hal. Hulk, Ralph Hal, right. And I just uh, I just didn't want to play. I was I was fed up with this. You know, the, the team was terrible. You know, and I got the club at home runs that year with 20, uh, tw yeah. 29, 28. But I mean, like, the team was terrible. And uh, just was just down and all that stuff. And uh, and I heard that rumors about I might be traded and this and that. So I just said, the heck, I'm going to go fishing for a few days. But I took off. I deserved it. <laughs> Speak of being traded, you were in the Astros and you went to the Cubs. What do you remember most about your experience with the Cubs? Because you were there for a couple of years, right? My Cubs, Cubs my... That was my, I got it right on now, man. I know, a little disappointed. My Cubs were, I had, I hit 300 for the first time in the majors, really. I know, and, 1951. Um, but just with the great ball players, I got, are you going to let me talk or are you going to keep talking? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm no, only kidding. No, no. Who's give that? Give it to her. Joe, give it to her. She could take the it. governor. No, let me talk to the girl. Wait a minute. I want to apologize. I was only kidding. Oh, no, that's okay. You know, Joe, when uh, I started watching baseball, I was seven years old in 1961. So I watched the Yankees because there were no Mets then. And what I remember about you is you were a first baseman, but sometimes you played center field. Well, I couldn't believe that somebody played. Well, first I came up. I was a, uh, in the minor league career. I was a center fielder. Yeah, all, it was my, amazing. All, all my years in the minors. And when I came up, you know, <laughs> yeah, Mickey and Roger and right, Mickey and center, yeah, Ellie and uh, Tommy Tresh had left. And uh, I won that first base job. I, I knew I. I learned how to play first base, and believe it or not, in grammar school. You know, I used to challenge the kids in box ball to try to cut first base, and they do that to give them a nickel. You know? <laughs> but, but at this, so I was always used to playing with the bag and all that stuff. So, But first base was really easy for me. I loved it. I won three gold gloves. And then I, I should have won more, but I went to center field for two years, and Mickey went to first. I was worried about Mickey. I thought it'd be harder on his legs playing first base than it would be in center field. Because you move around more. 
Yeah, he looked pretty good at first. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, Mandel said, I want to go to first. He goes to first. <laughs> Were you a good center fielder, Joe? Oh, What's yes. that? Yes. Were you a good center fielder? Yeah. I was a real good center fielder. Yeah. You know, yeah, but yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's, uh, you know, don't forget, you had to be a good center fielder playing Yankee Stadium then. It was 461 in center field. Left center was 457. Right center was 411. I covered a lot of ground out there because I had Yogi and Ellie out there with me. You know, <laughs> so I had to cover a lot of ground. <laughs> How was you like, arm? would you have a good arm? Anything you else you want to know, Nikki, you should know better. I'm the animal. We you, call Nick the animal. I'm making conversation with you. I talk to you enough. My what old lady is saying that my old lady is saying that I'm yelling. Who? No, but you know, I, I mean, you're good. You're good, Joe. You're good, Joe. You're not yelling. You're good. We just talk loud. You know that. She's got to interrupt. I just want you guys to know, me and Joe have a very special relationship. I told him. Yeah. I know. Are we talking about having a book out? Are you going to create a movie based on his book? Something like that. On? Yeah. Something really. Like that. Is there anything you can tell us? You want to hear something funny? I called him up years ago. He was flattered, whatever. Why does this kid like me? Listen, listen to the way we talk. And How uh, our voice sounds. Think about the movie we're going to make. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but we've never. I always want to be a, a, do a movie and become a, a wise that. guy. Our relationship is from the phone for like 10 years. That's, really? That's right. So that first, when, you, when you guys first met, when did you guys first meet in person? No, I never met him physically. I never. saw him. We would I, be... a, I saw him when I was a doorman one time. I was a doorman at the St. Moritz, and he was down that's the street something. at Mickey Mantles. Right. I, looked, I had a good eye. I used to see everybody. I said, "Holy shit, that's Joe Peppertone," because he had that hair, <laughs> hair, hair he had. But I didn't it was mine down. at the time. <laughs> well, whatever it was. But, uh, but I was always fascinated by him because I read his book one time in grade school. And then I rediscovered the book. It's like one of the best baseball books that yeah. people Joey don't talk about. Us proud. It's a How beautiful How about, book. hey, Ronnie, how about yeah. that? In grade school, he read my book. Yeah, how did he? How, wait a I'm, second. I'm a, I really feel old now. Yeah, we call Nick the animal. He's the animal. He's a Yankee animal right here. We got to, hey, how, hey, Nicholas, you couldn't read his book in uh, grammar school. Maybe I'm exaggerating. Maybe yeah, it was you are exaggerating. <laughs> I don't remember. Was I in kid, remember kindergarten. In kindergarten, you were. <laughs> I'm from almost 60 anyway, Ronnie. I'm not a, I'm getting old. Are you really old? How old are you? Old? Happy belated birthday. Thank you. I'm 59. Exactly. When are you going to be 60? The heck, so I'm only it's 20 years old. Wait, wait, wait. Joe has to sing happy birthday. People don't, people don't realize. Did. Joe sings good. I got him singing on the tape. Oh, people don't realize he could dance, he could sing, and he could cook. And people uh, don't realize that. And ask him about uh, going to uh, Toot Shores. About, uh, you, you know, you used to go to Toot Shores quite a bit, didn't you? With Me? The, uh, yeah. Of course. I used to go in there until I seen some big superstars and I don't go in there anymore. I wanted to be like that guy. <laughs> what, what was that like, Joe? I what hung was, out the cup. What? What was Toot Shore? What was the scene like? No, Toot Shores, but I, I was in there a couple of times, you know. Jackie Gleason used to be in there. Mickey used to go there a lot. Billy Martin. They hung out there at night, you know, but uh, right. that, you know, that, that's those guys, you know, but I never did that. I hung out with my guys. But Joe, when you but Joe, when you walked in the room, you're Joe Peck. I know. You, you read off that room. Good. You had well, to I used to call my I used to go up into a place, me and Phil Lynch, and Phil would go on the phone and <laughs> and see if Joe Peppertone is around, you know? Just right. to let people know we were there. <laughs> you know, the thing that people don't realize when you say that name, Joe Peppertone. Well, you it stop resonates. You know, it resonates with a lot of people. That name resonates. I told you I have no money. I can't send you anything to Doesn't talk and make nice about me. <laughs> Doesn't matter. The impact, the impact what? that you had made on people then and now is incredible. My dad used to wear number I twenty-five. Special. I got, I got two granddaughters, little babies, going on what three? I going on three. You know what they call me? Joe Pep. 
No, do they? <laughs> That's the first words out of their mouth was, I kept saying, Joe Pep. They, instead of saying, Papa, Papa, I said, Joe Pep, Joe Pep. Joe Pep. And now they're bigger and they say, Joe Pep. I love, Joe it. love it. Look at that. There he is. There's the guy. Oh, look yeah. at that you. handsome Italian. Where do you have that hanging? In the bathroom? No, in my in my in my Yankee room, <laughs> the sports room. Joe, Run, you run, mentioned run, um, look at you. Love that guy. Joe, you mentioned Phil Lynn's a couple of times. And the first thing it made me think of, and I hate to say this, if, if I'm I think I'm right about this. Phil Lynn's was the only player in Major League his, history who in his last time at bat as a baseball player hit into a triple play. Phil Lynch? Yeah. I never knew that. I really, I don't remember that. I don't know. <laughs> well, he's that right. Right. When he's with the Philadelphia Phillies. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't even remember when he was with the Yankees, my man. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, being from Brooklyn, being from Brooklyn, what was it like playing in the Bronx? Well, <laughs> same thing, Bronx and Brooklyn. They, they get, they get, same thing, you know? Right. Uh, I just, you know, coming from Brooklyn, man, it, you know, I had so many fans. I remember the, the one time I, I got I got into a fight against Cleveland, mm -hmm. right? And eight of my friends were locked up, jumping onto the field from Brooklyn, you know, in that fight. They all got in trouble. So uh, being in Brooklyn, it's I loved it. I, I, it's such, such a great, I had to say, experience growing up in Brooklyn. You know, it was just a lot of things, a lot of, a lot of good times growing up there. You know, and a lot of good people. Uh, I lived in an Italian Irish neighborhood, right? And everybody knew each other. My grandfather gave gallons of wine to everybody. You know, that's the way it was then. You know, and uh, I remember just people really putting coming together with each other. You know, helping each other. If somebody needed something alone, what are you looking that way for? You were looking straight at me. Don't say you look through the side. Me? I like people Dick? looking at me when I'm talking. Dick, you're not looking at him. You got to look at him. You got to look at him. Yeah, it's your habit, Irene. I said to my, you know, my wife is the same thing. I talk to her. She looks the other way. I hate that. Let's see. I don't know, Nick. Nick, tell Joe. That I'm getting once yelled you at by Yankee, Joe Pepitone. <laughs> once you're a Yankee and you and you could get be out of baseball for 40, 50 years, and they love him like they do now. Oh, and tell you. it's really amazing that he could walk down the street in New York, Brooklyn, or that's Fox, unreal. It really, it's amazing to me. Him, and they love him. It's amazing, and, it's amazing to me that I, I'm out here in Jersey now and I walk into places and, and somebody is going to say, Joe, hey, Joe Pepitone, you know? That's incredible. And I first thing I say, do I owe you money? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe. That's the first thing. I'm, I'm waiting to hear one of those wise guy voices. Hey, Joe, you owe me money. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> hey, Joe, how come you, with that, that great name, how come you never owned the pizzeria? Joe Thank Pepitone. you. I know you wanted to be a baseball player all your life. <laughs> In Chicago, did and, you? Know? And I wanted, That's and I Chicago. wanted to be an I actor. I want Joe, to be an did, actor. I want to be. Why did you ever open a pizzeria? Joe Peppertones, come on. He Joe does Pepe. in New London. Pe Pepe. You, you know that Pepe's in New no, London. Uh, Joe Peppertones. I had a restaurant. I had a restaurant in New York. Bar. 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 In Chicago, we had a bar in Chicago. It was the best to go in. But you couldn't go in. It was too dark. You don't know if you're going to get mugged or slugged in there. <laughs> no, yeah, listen to him. But you know, I had a, I had, I had in Chicago. I had two clubs, yeah. and in uh, New York, I had a big restaurant. My mother, you know, ran it. She used to be the cook, and uh, I remember she always asked me, "Where's the money for the vegetables?" I was out there night spending it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a great, yeah. Let me tell you something. Growing up, growing up in Brooklyn, and my friends, the ones number. that my friends that are still alive today were from Brooklyn. And, and we still know each other. We still reminisce. And it's, it's, it's that's the greatest feeling in the world for me when I'm around those people. Yeah. You know, you know, I've had great friends in baseball with the Yankees. I mean, yeah. they were all friends. We were close. We were family. You know, 
baseball, I'm not a big baseball fan anymore. Uh, baseball to me has changed so much that it, it took away everything that I was raised on being as a ball player. Even though there's times I, I swayed the other way, but it was a game. It was a game the way it's supposed to be played. You know, we we paid seven seventy five hundred dollars. Uh, I had a job after the season, and mm-hmm. but you know we played hard. We slid. We broke up double plays, and we never talked to the other teams. Now you got these guys kissing each other. Yeah. You don't know whether they're gonna to, to ballroom dance or what. You know, <laughs> it's 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 not baseball, and it's hard for me to watch. Your guys making twenty million dollars playing like that. You know, play the game. You know, I understand why. I do understand why they 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 have to be that way, and they have to watch out for the players because of so much money invested in them. You know, they they can't get hurt, and they can't do things, and they have to play the game easier. You know, it's not baseball. You know, I'm mad about hockey now. You know, it's a couple of fights, this and that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, hey, let me tell you something. Ask Joe about, you know, he's hitting 300 and they gave him like a three, four hundred dollar raise. And you have to negotiate for six months to get that three, four hundred dollars. What raise? I kept owing the team money. Right. <laughs> well, what that would you do with your signing bonus? Twenty five thousand when you signed in 1950. Oh, you must have read up on me, didn't you? No, you I really read up on me. Oh, no. no, you're bad. <laughs> Well, by twenty by twenty thousand, I got twenty thousand, twenty five thousand, and I. Uh, what a T burn! Of course, my father had just passed away. My father just passed away, so my mother would do anything for me. So, without a license, I went out with my mother. No, I I saw this uh, nineteen fifty eight Thunderbird, four pass, first four passenger Thunderbird, and I called my mother up. And I had my jeans on, all ripped and everything, <laughs> just just at sign. I told mom, I want this car. Joe, wait, no, I want the car. That's it, I want the car. So $4,000 cash, brand new Thunderbird. Nice. And uh, I took that car, took it home, and I had to report to spring training. So without my mother knowing it, without my mother knowing it, I jumped in the car and took off with no license at all and went to spring training. (laughs) On the way to spring training, I saw this nice bass boat. I said, man, how much is a bass boat? I sort of had my check. (laughs) Down. Give me the boat. Put it on the back of my Thunderbird. <laughs> you don't carry a boat on a Thunderbird. I put it on the back of the Thunderbird. Got a little freight. I'm only about 80 miles out of uh, Bartow, Florida. And uh, I see this kennel. And I see this German Shepherd. So I get the German Shepherd. And I put him in a boat. <laughs> and drove down to spring training. And now I'm halfway there. Now I'm going up. It's a Sunday morning. And I pull up in front of this hotel where I'm supposed to be. And every all the players are outside going ready to go to church. And this one guy, his name is Tommy Gott. So I yell out right out of Brooklyn, yo, is Tommy Gott there? <laughs> and this guy comes over, he goes, You must be Peppertone. <laughs> I says, Yeah. I said, Yeah, I am. I said, Why? You worried about me? Yeah, we know you just signed this and that. He says, well, What are you doing? What are you down here on vacation or play ball? I said, a little of each. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't go over too good. The Yankees sent down uh, uh, some of these uh, security guys. They took the boat. They took the car. And they left me the dog. Oh, no. <laughs> and I even, I even before I even got to speed training, I went by this lake and it was a cabin for rent. And I rented out the cabin. <laughs> and, and I was supposed to be with the ball club. So he says, come on, get yourself a room. I said, no, I got a house over there on the lake. <laughs> and that was the, that's the start of Joe Peppertone's uh, career. See? Great story. Aren't you glad I I never got over that. They still, the people still, you know, the Yankees said, how, how did you live this long? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the best part, uh, you still got your El Dorado the Cadillac? No, no, I got rid of that. Oh, that was a. I needed the money. Like, guy, you know, I sold it to some long. guy. That was I, everything I had. I got rid of. Oh, you know what? Well, let me tell <laughs> three, you something. Three we wives. Go to we go three to old Thomas. The 1999 World Series ring. I got rid of everything. I got rid of my money. I got this and that, and three wives. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We used to go to Old Thomas Day. 
he used to have that. This is funny. I, 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 I'm going to tell it like it is. He used to, we used to go down to, uh, we used to uh, dress in the regular uh, uh, Yankee locker room. Okay. So Joe would always stay back in while we're taking BP. And you always wind up taking, you know, some of uh, Jeter's stuff and A Rod stuff, didn't you? And you then you used to take it in your car. You took some stuff in your car, and then you left the game early and started selling some of the stuff out in the. What are you talking about? Bats and this and that. Yeah. No. Some somebody told me you did. You know, Bloomberg. You you know. I didn't know. It's that's not true. That's how rumors start. Just press this. No, but. But he had Come the largest in. car you have ever seen before in your whole life. And he used to uh, drive it to Old Timers Day with the convertible down. It was the best. It was a, and you couldn't park it because the parking lots are too small. So I had to take up three parking lots to put his car in. <laughs> and you remember all that stuff. I remember that. What are you talking about? Hey, hey Nick. Nicky. Yeah. Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we got to put a hit on uh, Ron. <laughs> no, you don't. Nick, no, 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 no. We're brothers think? now. Hey, are we brothers? He calls me the animal, Joe. I want to yeah, he's an animal. We're brothers. We're brothers. Forget we're brothers. about it. No, 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 no. Joe and I, we've been brothers for like 30, 40 years. You know, I, I knew Joe when I was 19 years old. Hey, Mary. Hi. Hey, Mary. <laughs> we're a, we're I 19 years I, I was 19 years old. When I was, I was so excited to see him, but he didn't show up for the game. I was so excited. Hey, Joe, uh, growing up in Brooklyn, were you a Yankee fan when you were growing up watching baseball? Oh, yeah, my whole family. My uncle, uh, uh, who taught me a lot about the game, uh, matter of fact, used to take me to tryouts. I was like 15 years old, going to tryouts, and we were lying, to my age, lying about my age. And we go all over for tryouts, but... Uh, he, he was the one that taught me everything. He, he, I mean, he would talk, my backyard had all holes and bumps and this and that. And um, he would just fire ground ball at me. And if I didn't stand in front of it, he'd come over and just give me a punch in the arm, a little black and blue on a leg, you know? <laughs> and he said, then he would tell me right after he did that, don't tell your father. <laughs> but, you know, but he made me, he made me really, he really taught me about the game. He was a real great stickball player. And, uh, and he was just my uh, my idol. He was about well, he's my mother's brother, but he's just like uh, just a young guy, really uh, high on the game of baseball, and a big Yankee fan. And the reason you know the Dodgers offered me offered me much much more money, yeah. but uh, being that my my family was uh, Yankee fans, I signed with the Yankees. I mean, I mean, I went to more Ebbets Field games than I did Yankee games. So you played for the Yankees. You played for the Astros for a hot minute, the Cubs. Um, what was it like playing in Japan? None of your business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you have it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get along too well in Japan. I had good money. They, they made they a made three-year contract, real good money at the time. And uh, then I went there, and I was the only American on the club. Every every team down there had two Americans on it. Uh, I got stuck with a Spanish guy who spoke nothing but Spanish. Oh, really? You know? So, but it's just that it, it was just so tough. You know, in the first game, uh, I got in as a pinch hitter, and I won a ball game from with a, with a double. It had scored a winning run, and so they jumped on me. I was the next uh, Sayonara O, whatever his name was. But uh, – Everything went downhill after that. I was I was so homesick. I was so homesick. I wanted to get. I just wanted to go home. I didn't want to play, but I needed the money. Uh-huh. But uh, no, no, no good, no good, not good. That was wasn't meant for me down there. No, who was the the best hitter you saw in in your era? The best in Japan. Hitter. No, no, in your era, no, no, no. I mean, you played with Yogi and well, my idol, my idol. Uh, when I, my idol, idol, not your idol, no, not your idol. Are you let me talk. No, let me ask this. We're both getting yelled at. Yo, let me ask the question. Who were the top? You would say five hitters of your era. I don't remember five hitters of my era. I named three. I'm old. Three. (laughs) The best, 
when I came up, my oh, idol, my my idol, right, right. right, was Al Kaline. Al Kaline. Oh, okay. Al Kaline is the best all-around ball player, one of the best I've ever seen. He could do everything. He knew how to run the bases. He could throw. He could field. He could hit. He was the rookie of the year in his first year, and he MVP. Think right. about it. Right. Wow. But, uh, you know, him, you have to see him age play a lot. I didn't see him that much, but you just go by the records and everything. He was the best of all time. Even oh, Mandel said that. that. Even <laughs> Mandel said that. Mandel had said Mickey, uh, Willie Mays was the best ball player ever. Oh, and, and I believe him. Yeah. I believe him. And, and, and looking back now, what you know now and how you played, you played with Yogi, Roger Maris, Whitey Ford, Mickey Mantle, DiMaggio. What are your fondest memories or what sticks out the most or what was just something that just, I don't know. I survived. Okay. <laughs> yes, you survived. Thank <laughs> God you survived. <laughs> no, let me tell you what I remember. I remember playing first base and turning around and look at Yankee Stadium and the greatest ball players that ever put put on a baseball uniform. Right. That's what I remember. I remember like the chills I used to get my first few times up at Yankee Stadium, my first time up at bat. I, I, I was dying and I, I just wanted to see one pitch. After that first pitch, for the rest of my career, I, I wasn't afraid anymore. It was, it was just exciting. It's just a thing that you dream of, you know? And, oh, yeah. And, and but I, I my dreams, my dreams didn't consist of Mandel and all those guys. All of a sudden, here they were. They were all the gods. All the Yankees, when I came up, were the greatest ball players. But, and who was you? You're young when you started. Who was your mentor? And I destroyed every one of them. I know you did. <laughs> <laughs> <He> did. <laughs> And who was your like? They loved, listen. I had I had so much fun with them, and they loved me. You know, they, I would come in, no, and I wanted no. But when I would like even when I was a kid, I would I would sing in front of my aunts and my uncles. I wanted to be to show them that I could do things like that. You know, and even with the Yankees, my to make friends, I wanted to have them like me. So I performed. I performed. You know what I mean? No, absolutely. Absolutely. I know everybody else knows what I mean. I know. I get it. And Joe DiMaggio. No, you don't. You keep looking. You got to stop looking down. You got to look at me. <laughs> I think. I think you got to cover her eyes. She's laughing at us. Like contact, Natalie. You're beautiful. I got contact with Joe. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm looking at you. Joe, and Joe DiMaggio paid you the biggest compliment that you had the, the all the tools to be an incredible player. What, Who? Joe, Joe D. Joe DiMaggio. Oh, Joe is my man. Joe, I, I always said Joe was one of the main guys that got me to the major leagues. He would, uh, he, I mean, he really took me aside. He really liked me, you know, and he wasn't that way with anybody. Uh, I mean, there was very few people that Joe would talk to, you know, and or sign an autograph for, you know. I heard and uh, he would just, every time I'd be like spring training, he'd be down there. And I'll tell you one thing about Joe D., he, he used to like to fish, and he called me up, and I, we used to stay in the Yankee Stadium Motor Lodge, right across the street from the Yankee Clipper Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, well, get, uh, call me at 6, we'll get together, we'll go, because I had to be at the ballpark like at 9, 9.30, 10 o'clock. So we go fish for a couple hours. He would take me with him fishing and uh, down the Everglades, and then all that. But then one time, a true story, when Only one he had Mount, when he had when he had Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. And so there she is just before she died. And uh, she was at the, she was in Fort Lauderdale. Why are you making funny faces? Who? You, you're making funny faces. <laughs> I'm Don't listening. make funny faces at me. Anyway, he calls me up. He says, Joe, never come heard on. heard of Marilyn Monroe. He said, we'll go fishing. Oh man, the thing went off there. Yeah. Oh Hold on. Are you okay? So I go up. He says, "Know what he's doing wrong?" It's Irene. Did Irene. you see her? Hi. She wanted to get on TV. I want to see her. Say hi, Irene. Huh? Irene. 
Irene, I want to Here, say hi. Let's just say hello. Come on. Irene wants to say hello. Irene just gave me a beating. I'm still alive. Hi, Irene. <laughs> hey, Nikki, how you feeling, honey? I'm hanging out. Hey, you doing good? Okay. How you doing? Right, go sit you down. Look great. Okay. <laughs> you look great. Thank you, honey. Take care. Love you. Love you. Love she's, had, she's really been, that she have a lot of problems right now with her. She just got, uh, um, sugar is like 400, imagine. From COVID. But anyway, listen, um, what are we talking about? Marilyn Monroe. Oh, Marilyn Monroe. 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 Anyway, so just, just come up. So I go up and I knock on the door and Marilyn Monroe answers. Wow. She's got a white Terry Clark robe on Actually, and a white look. towel around her head. And she looked, Joe. And she says, I says, Hello, she says, she says, I'm Marilyn. I said, oh, I know you're Marilyn. She says, come on in, Joe, be right out. He's taking a shower. And I went in there and I like, <laughs> and I heard him say, and he yelled out, Joe, I'll be right there. And I says, take your time. <laughs> 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 and she was so, she was so beautiful. No makeup and just a sweetheart, you know? And uh, we talked a while. Joe came out and he said, let's go. I said, well, take your time. We got a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we, he was just so great. So that's how I met her. And it was like, a, and we went, we went fishing, caught a couple of bears. And then I had to be at the ballpark. But he would, he would, he would praise me, you know. He said one time at Yankee Stadium, and I hate to brag about something, but I, I was up taking batting practice, right? <laughs> And Joe came out, and I was up, and I hit some balls in the stands. And he came up, and he says, I knew you were up at bat. I said, how'd you know? He said, from the sound of your bat. Wow. He, says, he said, from the sound of your bat. He says, not too many, have, not too many people have that sound. And, you know, and it was like a big, Absolutely. big compliment. And he meant it. I got some great pitches. Yeah. You could tell a but good it was, uh, that, that, that was bat. great. You know, that's good. But it's all over now. It was great while it lasted, you know, and we, God knows we met a lot of good people in our, our career. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, you know, life goes on, man. I'm 80. I feel, I feel like, you know, hey, I made it. You know, still it, it, it is. But you know what? Let, hey, wait, wait, wait. We've been out of baseball a long time, but what Zoom has helped us with and this virus has helped us with is to reconnect with fans, Yankee fans, and that remembered us or did not re- remember us, and they looked us up, and we became we became people again. We became a player in their eyes again. So you know, it's so much fun. When I was on this thing, and uh, um, I have no idea what this thing is, and you know, how do I do this? Hey, and What's a web root? I have no idea what that is. But anyway, <laughs> what Joe has done and what so many people were so excited to, uh, uh, to listen to Joe and he brought so, make, so much excitement to the fans. And when I wrote about him, I, I wrote everything that was the truth. He was the best for baseball he was an icon for people that wanted to be loose at all times. When he was in the clubhouse, the whole clubhouse was loose. Just like he would tell you, like Mickey Rivers and Oscar Gamble, when they used to do in fantasy camp, right? And that was like Joe. Joe, when he had a Yankee, uh, 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 when he had kangaroo court, people had to pay the money for kangaroo court. And you knew Joe was going to take the money and run. So the people, <laughs> so the people, so the people had to pay a fine. It's so bad. We never saw the money. Joe took the money and ran. <laughs> Turkey. But hey, wait, wait, wait. Okay. And, and listen, Irene said that was great, Ron. What are you talking about? You got part of the money. I know. Hey, I had to. <laughs> Who told well, you that? I saw you told Why that. would you say something like that? Hey, Nikki. Yeah. Don't get hey, me Nick. killed. Yeah. We got to put a hit on this kid. <laughs> Don't get me Don't killed. Nick, I'm okay. No, no. Know. Nick's going to be my just, detective. Just give him a part in your movie. I want to get a part in your yeah. movie. Joe's <laughs> a 
It's always the star of the movie. But you want to get part of my movie? Yeah, I do, actually. Did you say you want a part of my movie? I do, I do. You got to get somebody. No to problem, him. honey. No problem. My brother, my brother could play him as an older guy. What? But we got to get oh, somebody. Yeah, your brother you, could, you, you, hey, you, you could wind up being my sixth wife. Hey, whatever. <laughs> he has a thing for you. Oh, hey, Nick, you've been talking to him for 10 years. Do you uh, have anything I need, concrete I need people. that might be working out? Hey, Nikki. Have yeah. I what? What'd Did you say? say have I been working out? Who? Me? No, 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 huh. no, no. Does you have anything concrete that's happening with Joe? You've been talking to him for quite a while. Do you yeah. have anything that uh, uh Mark Wahlberg's company? Do I have uh, anything what? They want to do a documentary on Joe. Oh, we haven't perfect. figured out we haven't figured out the money yet. Mark Wahlberg's company, <laughs> unrealistic ideas, but you know these people. Don't worry about it, Dickie. Dickie, don't worry about nothing. Don't we'll worry. take care of it. We're going to get it made. Before I die, we're going to get it made. Ronnie, what, what, were you, what, what did Ron want? Ron asked me a question. What was the question, Ron? I forgot. I'm old, too. Well, no. Well, Joe Papatone is a pop cultural icon. I mean, he's he's been named numerous times in episodes. Excuse and me. What do you know? <laughs> I know a lot. <laughs> I and, and listen, I'm <laughs> glad she was on because book. I have a lot of fun with her. Have you read his book? Go I, read his book. Did you read his book? Not all of it. Not all of oh, it. But I, read, but I read another book. I read another book. I read God another forbid read you read, read that book. book. Huh? No, no she read can't read that book. book. Why not? Little baby. <laughs> the man's book. I can handle a it. A man's book? <laughs> I, I can handle it. Nikki said, Nikki said it's a man's book. Hey, Nick. Yeah. I mean, say he's going to beat you up too. Right. I'll help. It's not a man's book. No, I can handle it. Matter of fact, there's more women in that book than men. There's plenty of women in it, but you know what I mean. It's from a man's point of view. Yeah, I know, and, Nikki. I know. And was that supposed to be made? I know, what Nikki. What it means <laughs> from my point of view. You should go. You should have gone into his bar in Chicago. You know what I wish. Studio you know before. what I wish. I wish that. I wish right now that I could meet all of you people in person. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do. It. We're gonna meet in the Bronx. All right. Or we'll have a nice dinner. To, a nice dinner together with Nikki. When Nikki's in town. Yes. Absolutely. Huh? I'll come. Yeah, when Nikki's baseball. in town. I will come. When Nikki's in town and the Jewish boys pays. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to worry. I got a lot of guilt. You don't have to worry. I got. I know I you do. I know you do. I still got my bar mitzvah money. No, I still got my bar mitzvah money, huh? No money, Joe. This is what hey, we're hey, going to do. Ronnie, Ronnie, you didn't know my yeah. you didn't know my real name before Pepperton. It was Yusla Pepperberg. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I cannot right now. <laughs> so this is what we're going to do. Once we can all gather safely, we're going to meet in Brooklyn. We have Carmine's Pizzeria on Graham Avenue in Brooklyn. Oh, yes, gonna, Carmine's. And you're going to be a guest on my <laughs> podcast. I have a podcast, too, with Chris Colabello, who's a... Well, I'd love to do it for you, honey. I'd love to do it. Spaghetti I'm not pepper. a guest? Huh? I, I do you have an expense account? Am I, I a guest, too? You're absolutely a guest. It's called Spaghetti and Baseballs. So we're going to have Nick. Oh, God, I, I like expensive reports. Spaghetti and Baseballs. Day. You expense everything. I like this. Can we say, the do, they allow, do they allow Jewish people in comments? Yes, absolutely. Except everyone. <laughs> it's not just a man thing. Everyone. <laughs> let, me, let me just say, let me say this again. I love Ron Dealey, man. You know, he, that article... And my family read it, and this and that, and and how you praised me, and uh, it was really, really nice, Ron. I want to thank you again for that. Oh, you hey, I, I I hate to tell you, but I really did mean it, and uh, I, I meant every word about it. And you know, I mean, you deserve everything. I mean, uh, you you help the game of baseball, and you know, the like you said before. How they play baseball now is not the real game of baseball. When you and I played, and Nick would tell you, and uh, Governor Patterson would tell you, the real baseball was when you slide in the second base, breaking up a double play, 
when you get drilled, uh, uh, when somebody hits a home run in front of you, you might get drilled, but that's part of baseball. And then, you know, yeah. you start cussing people out. Nowadays, they'll kiss you for getting a base hit. And now what they do is they throw, they get a base hit and it's a big deal to them. They'll throw that bat 25 feet up in the air. You know, you don't know who it's going to hit. You, yeah. you got it. You had to try what I did. You tried batting behind Mandel and see how many pitches you're going to get oh. thrown at. <laughs> oh, oh. Listen, before, oh. before something, I wanted to just say something, if you don't mind. To my son, all right, BJ, absolutely, and Katie, and Billy, I love you. They're all my friends. My family is my friends. Thank you. Oh, we love it. We need more Joe Pepitone in our lives. Oh no, no, he's a well. You better guy. hurry up. He I don't have that too. long to go. Hurry up. <laughs> he cooks too. You know, when you tell him to go to coal mines early, they'll pick him up. And let him put his chef chef hat on and let him cook back there. You should do that. Governor actually, Patterson will love that. Hey, Ron, Ron, no, Governor Patterson is going to take us to Sylvia's. You're going to yeah. take us to Sylvia's in Jersey. This guy's, actually, an, this guy's an original. The last of the movie. And my man, Nikki. They don't make Just, them like What about that Nikki? Look at the, they look don't at, make look at the things that Nikki. No. Everything is watered down. Everything is mediocre. Hey, gentlemen. He keeps it What real about Nick Toro? This, let me deal. say something. Why? Let me just say something. Nick Turturro, I watch, I swear, just by accident, I've watched him in more movies on TV, right? I've seen him beat up guys, hug people, love people, and beat up guys again. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, no, I mean it. I, it's, it's, kid's a great actor, you know? And, yeah. Who's that? Who's the cop show that you were on, Nick? NYPD Blue. NYPD, great. That was great. I really, Nick. Excuse me, Nicky. I grew up with you. Yeah, thank you, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody did. Yeah. I love him. You even even received I an love you, award Nick. for that. He's my friend. I love that he's my friend. Yeah, and he, and Nick, he got an Emmy award for his for his role in yeah. NYPD Blue. I mean, listen, you gotta you know, stop so looking at this song. Hey, that was, you know, you gotta 90, stop looking 96, to the side. 96. Like this. <laughs> He's making fun of me. That girl keeps looking to the side. Look straight I'm, ahead. I'm, I'm talking, talking to you. I'm looking. Yeah, I'm with these guys. Are you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm with Joe. He's great, but you can't get away. It's a one man show. Joe, Joe, Joe and I are gonna do Joe and I are gonna do our own show. We'll live the show in person. Yeah, got got on, you know, got got on. You gotta yak. Let me say, he wants to do a show. I swear, I swear to God, when I get never to work again. <laughs> oh, when we make that documentary, then you could talk, Joe. All right, yo, Nikki, anytime, man. You're my man, Nick. You know that. The last oh, you can say anything the, you the want name to of the on doc, this thing, Ronnie. No. Hey, Ronnie. Yeah. You know what the name yeah. is? It's gonna be called the Last Supper. Oh, I like that. The last supper. I like that. The last supper. But don't, hey, don't let that be the last supper. No, it won't no, be. I don't it's like that. It's not, it's, it's that's a, the last. No, I understand, but it's I mean, the last it's supper. But though. it's the last supper. But put a feed bag over his head so he can keep on eating. Oh, he's gonna eat all night. Yeah, put a feed bag over his head. He's now, who's he, talk, who he talking about? Who's he talking about? Spaghetti and meatballs. Thing went out. Again. We're just talking. Spaghetti and meatballs. There you are. No spaghetti Nicholas, and meatballs. Look at you. Hey, look at that. The cops. Look at there you, you go, Nick. How young you looking. Yeah. Look at you. You are a sergeant, too. Look at this. How you get to be? Yeah, yeah. Renzulli. Sergeant Renzulli. Yeah. No, back home down in Georgia, we call it spaghetti and meatballs. Oh, that's right. You know, that's that. Hey, Irene, we call it spaghetti and meatballs. What do y'all call that? You know, you don't call it like pasta sauce. We get the. How about matches? You call it. How about uh, matches and sausage? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, sausage. No, Joe, good. being Italian, being an Italian, do you call it sauce or gravy? Yeah, massage. Oh, uh, massage. What? Gravy. You call it sauce or gravy? Sunday sauce. I, I, wait a minute. What is it? Yeah, sauce? It, I mean, sauce. we make sauce, of course. Sauce. I'm just asking. I'm just asking. But you know what? Oh, but my aunt, it, it, in my family, stuff. my aunt called it gravy. My mother called that was it a sauce. Difficult question. Uh, it, no, it, you know, you don't understand. Why would you ask a question, question like that? 
No, because why somebody, would you ask a question like that? Some of these Italians call it gravy. Thank you. Why? It's no, it's sauce. Sauce, right? Sauce. Yeah, sauce. Gravy is gravy is what you put I mean, on the I mean, mashed potatoes. Way, Joe. I mean, yeah, mashed gravy is mashed potatoes. Yo, do you make your own red sauce? Excuse me. Spinach, and you get the red sauce, Joe. No, tonight I'm eating matzo balls no, and yakuza. No, but you make your own red sauce. <laughs> Ooh, what kind of matzo Are balls? Are you listening? Yo, listen, listen. Yo, no. you don't make your own red sauce. Of course. How do you make it? How do I make it? Come on, Nikki. I want how to know make how it. you make it. I, I like I like pork. I like this. I get a nice chunk of beef, a nice chunk of pork. I put it under the oil, a lot of garlic, a lot of garlic. That's it. I put my tomatoes in. But then there's all kinds of sauces I make. I make a lot of sauce. I make a good sauce. I make a bad sauce. And I make a scondilli sauce. Hey, a scondilli. All right. Yeah, you get the, you get the <laughs> no, Nikki, come on. I love it. Man. I make I'm, great I'm sauce. I'm only kidding, Joe. I'm only kidding. No, you, what do you mean you're yeah, kidding me? We're having fun here. We're you're having too fun busy. Here. Nikki, what? I don't work. All I got to do is make sauce. No, I mean, listen, I make a great sauce. Nikki, red sauce is great. I make it great. Oh, what kind of uh, beatballs you make? Nick, what I'm kind of ask you a question? Well, we have to ask. Oh, we have another. Let me ask you a question. Who's signing this check for this? Here. Where do you, where do you stand on all this? Ground pork and ground meat. Okay, when I go in the city, I always no, wait, ask, wait I want meat, meatballs, no, hey, and I hey, want Ron. spaghetti. And they always, it's veal. It's always like uh, the meatballs of veal. I don't yeah, want that. I want the real meatball. big. What do you it's know? Like <laughs> we have hey, Nick. Oh, Nicky. Nicky. Why? Nick, look. I want everybody to look at Nick. This is Hollywood. I'll show you how why I say Hollywood. Why? Look at his collar. It's pulled up. All those people wear their collars pulled up. <laughs> and then they wear their, they wear their coats pulled up. And you see the shirt like I'm wearing. Look, look. look, I got the same shirt. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Hey, turn around. Right. Poor, pa poor Governor Patterson has been just hey, into this craziness oh. over here. <laughs> it's 80 degrees out in California where it's you are. From I said, uh, when does the show start? 1970. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to tell you. I from 1973. I went Wait. to the Yankee, first Yankee game. Look at that. I went to my first Yankee game in 1983. Look at Nikki. In 83. Governor Patterson, have you ever been to a Yankee game before? Governor Patterson, he's a Mets fan. I don't know if he's been to the stadium. Have you been to the stadium at all? Is this an all night show? Ron, I hold the record. I got to go to the stove and cook my sauce. Are we invited? Yeah. How long is it going to take you to get here? Where, in Jersey? Where are you? Well, right now I'm in Connecticut, but I can be in Jersey. In oh, I thought, you were, I thought you were in California somewhere. No, no, no. No, I'm that's Nick. Nick's the only California. Are you right guy. here? Yeah, I'm local. I don't know. The governor is a Met fan? Yeah, he's a major Met fan. Okay. Nick, I like that shirt. Nick, Nick, you like almost said that like, oh, that's too bad. Hey, listen. Yo, you want one? It's what time? It's nine. Oh, shit, what else? Yo, it's a sandlot shirt. No, it's a great shirt. Yeah, but Joe, do you want one? How did you get that hat? One minute, one minute. What player? How did you get that hat? What, the helmet? Yeah. I bought it at Manny's Baseball Land. Across the street is a dollar fifty one nine four zero. I used to collect how Hey, that fits real well. Today. We got to get you a brand new hat. We got, you know what? If Joe, if if something's at the stadium, this I year, can't we'll see anybody. A real, uh, Yankee hat, mm -hmm. a, a, a real. Uh, so if you ever play stickball, if you ever get beamed in uh, uh, California, it won't yeah. break your helmet. Well, speaking of stickball, well, not stickball really, but Joe, you played football for a while. They gave me a buck right. for this Can I say something? Yeah. Okay, wait. It's nine o'clock past my bedtime. <laughs> you like, you, you get. Leave us? It's actually eight. I'm not as young as the rest of you people. He gets an early bird special and he falls asleep. 
fan. No, not that. I got to go out to the town. I'm going to Copacabana. You going to the Copa? <laughs> Thank you, Jack. But it's really nice talking to you guys. I really enjoyed this. Oh, are you? Re- oh, you're really leaving. Make sure Ron sends the check in the mail. <laughs> uh, it's checks in the mail. The checks in the mail. Hey, Joe. No, it really. Right, if you gotta name? go. You go. Go. Hey, but sir. let me tell you something. Put my Yankee jacket on. All right. Hey. Uh, hey, uh, hey, I, hey. Oh. Okay. There you go, Nikki. Okay. Nice jacket. <laughs> you look good. Right, jacket. You know. You know, you are preppy. You like that? It looks yeah. good, Nick. You go New York. You, like that, you look good. Uh, yeah. Good, Nicky. You look good. You could walk down in Brooklyn. You will I'm not get shot. I you could walk in Brooklyn. <laughs> you can walk in Brooklyn. You're okay. I'm You're all right. Okay. Hey, hey Nikki. Yeah. Don't pay too much attention to Ron. I don't know. Ronnie's a good guy, but he was not necessarily saying anything. He was a good guy. I love him. No, no. You know what? This is, you know, I've been doing this for eight months. I have affection for so 73. That's when Ronnie was the DH and I became a Yankee fan. So. 73. Yeah, you know, 73. First DH ever. Yeah, and I screwed There's up the game of baseball. Right. And I, I never, hey, I never I thought that, spring. yeah, I never you thought that baseball. I never, get out of the hand here, honey. You know, it's 40 years later. I know. And it's they don't have a universal DH. They don't have the universal DH. What time does this show get over? Whatever you no, want to be over, Joe. <laughs> go to sleep. Just close your eyes. You're okay. No, go to sleep. You look wonderful, Joe. Yeah, do I look great? No, we can't. <laughs> my nose, still, go, my go, nose go, is go. bent lately. I don't know. You look great. Yeah, you like go. me? My stomach. Look. <laughs> I just... You're still handsome, Joe. <laughs> no, Joe. Uh, oh, I just think you're going to want... Oh, look at that picture. Deadly. You look nice. Oh, Ron. <laughs> God, you're a baby then. Look how you're nice you look. That was, that was last year. Two years Ronnie, ago. I love your hair. I like you're your hair right like now. Hey, Ron. Yeah. You hate that new Yankee Stadium? Uh, uh, you know what? I hate how they hit because the ball just jumps out of there. If you hit the ball to right field, it's a home run. Uh, it's 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 you know it's not it's the real the baseball game. it's the baseball today yeah the baseball no no, no. they make so it the tight. baseball a deader that's what they like said a golf still ball. in yankee stadium you still gonna get ten thousand home runs hit in yankee stadium i mean you know what they used you know what they did last year when they hit home baseball. runs when they went out on the field they got baseballs and you know how those little uh manicures uh out on the uh uh the uh uh uh, uh on the chairs and stuff, they took the balls and they used to throw the balls at the uh, uh, the people in the uh, chairs, and they used to bet. See how many they used to hit. No, it's, it's changing an awful lot. It's they ruined that ballpark. They ruined Let's, it. Hey, Nikki. It's, 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 it's museum. I, hey, I miss the old stadium. stadium. Ronnie, it's cold. Everybody's yeah, it's, talking. It's not about. like Yankee hey, Nick. Stadium. What, Joe? I want to say good night to everybody. All right. Good night, right, Joe. Nick, and I'll talk to you, right, Nick? I'll talk to you soon, Joe. Nick, you will talk Joe. soon. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Joe. Joe. Bye, bye, sweetheart. I love you, Thank big you. guy. Hey. All right, Ronnie. Thank you. I love you, big guy. Be safe, big guy. Right. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you real soon. Thank you, everybody, for me. All right. I love you, Joe. So Irene, much, Joe. thank you. Love you. Bye, bye. You're welcome. Love you. Love you. Love you, love you. Love you big guy. Let me tell you something. You know, you couldn't find. People don't realize he was the funniest uh, guy I think that I have ever seen in the game of baseball. He was so much fun to play. I, he's, I don't know if he could hear it or not, but he was so much fun to to be able to, uh, uh, you know, just to watch. And his uh, uh, just his meaner, his demeanor, it was just incredible. He was Thank wonderful. You. Are you going to go? Are you leaving, Nick? Yeah, I'm gonna leave, Ronnie. Okay, Nick, I love you, big guy. I love you, big guy. Hey, call me up once in a while. I, I was sick, Ronnie, for a month. You okay? You had the, the the virus. Yeah. Are you okay? I'm coming back, but I'm having a lot of post uh, stress oh. things. Are you really? I hope you're okay, big guy. You, yeah. Did you get your hey, shot? Hey, yet? Well, I'm alive. I'm alive. Did I'm you alive. get your shot? Not yet. I just been getting better first. Oh, so you're not allowed to have your shot yet. They make so you've been out really uh, for about a month then, right? Yeah. 
Okay, I hope you're better, big guy. If you need yeah. anything, hey, we love you. If you need anything, do not hesitate to call. Awesome. And anything we could do for you, Nick, anything we could do for you and your family, just let us know, okay? Thank we're family much. now. We're family. Nick, we're that Yankee was awesome. Thank we're you. We're family. So Even, we're family. We love you, Nick. We love Thank you, you, big guy. Thank you very much. Feel better. I will. I'm trying. Feel better, big guy. Love you. Love you. Right, huh? Love you. But it's, you know, I mean, once you've been a Yankee fan your whole life, it's fun to, uh, um, when you wear that Yankee pinstripes and, you know, Governor Patterson, you know, and I know, you know, you know, you've been up in New York and, you know, with the Yankees and the Mets and, you know, and uh, being a Met fan, that's fine. But, you know, when you put that Yankee pinstripes on and even, you know, with the New York, uh, with the Mets now, with Steve Cohen buying the team, you know, it might be a big change uh, uh, with the Mets. I mean, uh, you know, they're coming around. And uh, it'd be great if we could get in the Subway Series again. That would be fabulous. You know, yeah, all this bad stuff that's happened to us for the last year and a half and get a Subway Series, that would be great. When, when they had the Subway Series in 2000, Ron, my best friend, Joe Haslip, who's a big Yankee fan, he and I had a bet. And the bet was that the loser had to wear the uniform of the of the winner's team. And we would go to all these bars together. So I went to like six bars one night with the Yankee uniform on and people hugging me and they never know. <laughs> they would never know the agony of that evening. <laughs> you know, the only oh, it was thing- was the best that, night of your life. <laughs> let me tell you something. When we played, the only thing that we played because we didn't have the interleague games when we were playing, okay? We had the oh, uh, we had the mayor's trophy game when we had the Yankee Mets. If you want to talk about so much fun, and we we used to bus it over from the stadium over to Shea and people from Shea to go to Yankee Stadium, that stadium was just rocking. That was just because that was the only time that we ever played against them. Right, and it was so much fun. It was right. wonderful. That was the best. That was the best of the best. They, Steinbrenner was always ticked when we used to lose to the Mets. If we lose, lost to the Mets, oh, he would destroy us the next game, the next day. And that's how it was. I well, mean, that was, that was what was so interesting because, because the Yankees had won the World Series in 96, 98, and 99. But when they played the Mets in 2000, if they had lost that series, that would have been a major embarrassment for, for the boss. Oh, yeah. And there was a lot, really more pressure on the Yankees than the Mets because, you know, the Mets play in the World Series uh, probably as often as Haley's Comet comes by. <laughs> and so, you know, that doesn't happen. By the way, Ron, I was born on Grand Avenue in Brooklyn. So, where oh. is Carmine's? My address is 345, 345 Graham Avenue. Oh, 358 sorry. Graham Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, 358. 358 Graham Avenue, Carmine and Sons Restaurant. Well, you and Mary got hey, you and Mary got to meet us there. Well, yes. you know, once this thing opens up, and you know, I'm in Atlanta, and everybody else is different places and stuff. Once it opens up, we'll meet over there. It's a wonderful restaurant. Carmine really does it really well, and it's a beautiful restaurant. It really is. The food and the pizzas and the lasagnas and I mean, you ask Garrido and ask Lenny. Lenny gets a pizza without the crust. He gets <laughs> just the toppings on it. But it's it's excellent. The food is excellent there. And there's another place. It's uh, uh, Mario's. And talk uh, about uh, Mario. Uh, Don't talk about Mario. Well, but the pizza is it's for sale. Uh, oh, it is for sale. But anyway, it's a, it's a great restaurant in uh, Hoboken. It used so to be Ron, uh, in Yankee Fantasy Camp. That's all I have I a do. question I just want to hear you answer. Yeah. What would happen if on our program one night we brought back Joe Pepitone and Mickey Rivers? The rest of oh, us would just sit and watch through the whole program. Oh, it'd be the funniest thing in the world. Let me tell you something. The biggest, if you, the three, the three guys are the, the, you know, the funniest guys in the game of baseball. There's Joe Pepitone, Mickey Rivers, and the late Oscar Gamble. If you want to talk about the three, I don't know if you knew Oscar. Have you ever met him? In, uh, no, uh, I never in, met him. You know, 
He was a funniest. And he came up with the Chicago Cubs, right? Cubs. And his afro was like 12 feet long and stuff. <laughs> and, you know, he what? Uh, let me tell you something. They're my two brothers, uh, Mickey and Oscar. They're probably you know, other than Thurman. But uh, uh, Mickey and Oscar was probably two of my uh, closest people on the team. They're wonderful. Yeah. I mean, they're the funniest people. They would have you. They would have you crying. You should go to Yankee fantasy camp when you have both of those guys. You get on the bus. You have no idea where you are. You sound like where you're in Santa Monica or someplace like that. I mean. Orchestrated by. Oh. oh, I think that's our wrap up. Speaking of wonderful people, we had amazing people on tonight. <laughs> We want, to thank, we want to thank, again, Lisa Diane for uh, helping us out with Joe Pepitone, uh, Governor Patterson for joining us, and of course, Nick Tapiro. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you follow Ron Blumberg on Facebook, rewatch our video, leave us comments, and look out for the next episode next Tuesday. Lisa, thanks for bringing Joe on. Uh, Mary and uh, Gov, thank you all very much. David, thank you very much. Thanks for being part of this. Joe Garrido and Lenny, thank you very much. And Natalie, it's wonderful to see you again. You are the best. I love you to death. Oh, Keep I on love doing you. This. Thank you so much for always having me on. It's been fun. It's been oh, good. I love y'all to death. <laughs> good night, Natalie. Governor, good night, y'all. See you on Friday. Have your spaghetti and meatballs. Love y'all. Good night, Joe. 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 Good place I can talk to other people right now. I'm literally, not only caught, I am hiding in my apartment from all the media, and I bet you can't guess why. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> no comment. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow, what a that show. Was, that was entertaining. That was a great was show. Great. I got yelled at. I got yelled at by Joe. Listen, for Natalie, you held your own, so you know what? <laughs> I feel bad because every time you were looking down, I think you were looking at my text. Well, that too. Well, no, your texts are to the side over wow. here. And, and I'm, looking, and I, at your notes. <laughs> I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> well, next week, we got another good show. Uh, we're going to talk about the 78 Yankees with Mike Heath, who was the backup catcher to Thurman Munson on that team. Oh, nice. Is also promising to get us another player from that team. I threw oh, wow. a few things out to him. Uh, hopefully the big guy can come up with them. <laughs> I don't why not. And we're also going to be joined by noted actor and chef, Joseph Ganiscoli, who played Vito Spadafora on The Sopranos. Oh, that's yeah, amazing. Nice. It's going to be a lot of fun. I know Ron likes to talk about food, and Joe is a big food guy. I think yeah. he's a private chef, and he's a big Yankee fan. So uh, that works. It's a lot of fun. No, you guys do an incredible job. It's really an honor to, to work with you guys on this, and you guys are killing it, let me tell you. Thank you, but we're very underappreciated by our employer. Natalie, you made this I'll talk to Ron. Too, so you know what? You, you don't have to talk to me. We got to take our hats off to you. I'm going to ring any second now. <laughs> <laughs> no, tonight was great. I mean, I honestly, I just wanted to listen to the stories. I mean, I had a little bit more, but it, it, it you know. No, no, it, 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 we lost control two seconds we, into it. We did lose control. I wanted to hear more about the hair and his two pays. He has a gamer. Did, we, did anyone know about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much. And uh, Natalie will talk. Joe, I'll talk yes. to you. We talk constantly. And, uh, you know, Thank we appreciate you. having you because you do, you know, you, even though you're looking at your notes, we know you do do a lot of research, which was like really lacking with our uh, no. uh, your co host. No. But then it makes it real and genuine. I look at my notes. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. No, Joe, but you know what? Let, let, let me say something. It comes out natural for you. So, you know what? You, you, you're you a quick read because you're looking at these notes and you automatically come up with something. So, listen, kudos. I try. It's all about listening. It's all about listening and the guests make it easy. You guys make it easy. So, it, it's just a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So. Well, thanks hey, again. hopefully Joe Pepitone will join you and Chris and um, getting in baseballs. We'll see. <laughs> I got to talk to um, Carmine. 
try to see if uh, you know he's willing to for this free advertising. You better be coming up with some free food. <laughs> I know. I mean, I don't think there's been a show that we haven't mentioned his restaurant. So. No, has, yeah. I mean, in Mario's was kind of like a joke, but actually it was in the newspapers the other day because Mario was like a Hoboken institution. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He put up the business for sale. I don't know if you saw that or not. Yes, I did. I did. Oh, yeah. so, I mean, there was no, I mean, you could talk about it. I mean, but... if I had some extra cash, I would buy it because I also get 10 days in his house in Italy. So <laughs> for 10 years, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. It was for 10 years. No, I mean, yeah, well, exactly I do. whatever. It's, I'm sure the, the real estate there is very valuable. Yeah, you know, whatever. <laughs> and he has a good business. So, uh, Mario Albunia, 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 I think. Albunia. Albunia. Yes. If you're out there, we love you, big guy. Yes. Thank you. Exactly. So, I guess everyone tune in next week. Ron Blumberg, 8 p.m. Eastern, Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. Twitter and you.